Hey, what's up guys? Today, we are going to unbox this DS420 Plus Synology NAS. Try to see what's inside the box and do a quick setup so that we can get started using this Synology NAS. Let's get started. What's inside the box? I don't know. Let's go ahead and find out. So it's my first time to open this. Then we can start at the back portion. Two fans to make it cool, a reset button, and two gigabit Ethernet ports, a USB port, and the power port to power this device on. Okay, in front we have four bay for hard drives, then a power button, a USB port, a status indicator here. If you want to open this one, pull this up like that, then you can remove it. Good. At the inner side, you can see that you can upgrade the RAM there. And at the bottom part, you can also upgrade this with SSD NVMe um, drives. Okay. But this one itself is going to work. We only need to plug in hard drives. On the other parts of the box, we have two Ethernet ports with the power adapter. Then we have the manual. Now, Synology NAS doesn't have drive, so I need to order a separate or include it in the package four drives. That's four terabytes. So in total, I'll be having a space of 16, four times four, 16 terabytes. But of course, that, that's not going to be exact. Okay, so this is kind of an additional um, purchase for the NAS. Now, if you're going to put this one on this mount for the drives, you need to flip this one like that. I mean, push it up. That's the lock that's going to hold the drive. Then place the drive on top of it and then put back the lock of this drive bay so that it's going to hold up the drive. All right. You can see that plug lock. Good. We only have one in. So we're just going to go ahead, remove the packaging for these drives. We'll be having an estimated uh, drive space of 16 terabytes, but we are going to set up RAID so that total space would decrease because of the fault tolerance that it's going to give us. All right, two, second drive, third drive, then fourth drive. Good, let's go and power it on. Plug it to our network, you can use both networks, then power it on, plug the power. All right. Boop, boop. <laughs> okay. I'll bring out my laptop connect to the Synology NAS, then we can start the configuration right away. In our browser, guys, go ahead and type Synology NAS colon 5000. That's the default address for Synology where we can start to configure the NAS. So this web assistant will show up. We go ahead and click setup. Then we are going to install it. Click that and go ahead and say, I understand. Installing this station manager. This will take some time. So I'm just going to go ahead and fast forward this one. But if you are doing this one at the same time watching this, you can go ahead and post this one and then play it back again if you're done with this portion. Okay. Once the installation of the disk station manager is done, it's going to restart the Synology NAS and it will give you a timer of uh, around 10 minutes, but it doesn't actually get to 10 minutes. For me, it took around six minutes. So I did a quick fast forward here so you can see that it's going so fast and it's already around six and it's done. Okay, the next setup that we can see is a server name, username, and password. So I'll just place the server name as MIS NAS, then go ahead, set up username MIS, then set up my password. All right. There you go. And then we go for next.
Okay. So if you have an online account with Synology NAS, go ahead and place it here for the sake of this tutorial. Basically, I'm not going to do it. And there are advantages of using the setup quick connect because you don't need to uh, configure port forwarding for your Synology NAS to be accessible outside. But anyways, we can always go back and configure this one in case that we want to configure quick connect. All right, you're all set. I'll just hit go. Quick um, notification here, got it. I'll hit remind me later. Then there you go, quick tutorial. Great dashboard we have here. But uh, the first thing we want to make sure is jump into control panel, go to my network settings and make sure that my IP address is set to static. So I'll jump into that network interface tab. You can see that I have LAN1 and LAN2 connected. So the other one is 172.22. It's kind of my secondary network and my primary network is LAN1, okay? So if you have two networks, then you can do this one. But uh, if you have only one, one network will work. So I'm just going to give this one as, set this one as static. I'll stick with the IP address that it got from the DHCP server, but this will be static. Take note of that IP address because we are going to use it later. So I'm just going to press OK. Once I clicked OK, it basically disconnected me from the NAS because of the setting of the IP address. So if I try to click something here, there you go, it disconnected to the NAS. So I'll just type in the IP address of the NAS that is set there. That's 192.168.180.118 colon 5000. And it will bring me to this dashboard, I mean the login portal of the NAS. So you can see there MIS NAS, put in the username and password, sign in. Now, when we sign in on the upper left corner here, click this uh, menu here, and then you go to storage manager. We need to set up storage pools or volume so that we can start using our NAS. So we can start with volume, click on create, and then you will have a mode here. You can choose which one you wanna do, but I'll just go for custom and go for next. Create a new storage pool. I want to make use of um, support single volume, but provides better performance. I'll, I'll go for higher flexibility, multiple volumes, allowing higher flexibility in space allocation. That's what we need. All right. Okay, the next thing here, what is the RAID type that we're going to use? We are going to make use of RAID 5. You can read the description if you want to understand how it works. Next, then four drives, next, okay then we are going to use BTRFS. We go for next, description optional. The total capacity that we can use is 10.90 terabytes. Well, that's close enough for 12 terabytes because some of the space is going to be used by the OS of Synology NAS and the others are for the um, fault tolerance for RAID 5. So for example, you are going to use 16 terabytes. That's four terabytes times four drives one of the drives will be used as a fault tolerance for raid 5 okay so you can re read more over the internet about red 5 so if you're going to lose one drive or one of your drives fails then you can still have the whole data that you have okay so that's the concept now here you can wait for this one to get it set up then once it goes to verifying drives in the background checking party consistency we can basically go to the other configurations like setting up a folder or a drive for our clients creating users and groups so that we can apply permissions who can access who what are the files a user can access well close this one and jump into control panel click on shared folder but before we create a folder to share i want to create a user so jump into user that's the MIS we created when we set up the NAS. But in this case, I want to create a separate user again for accessing files. Description, email address, and then password. And next, these are the default groups. We can add more groups if you want to. I'll just make this one as administrator and we should have access to the web services that we are logging into. So there are no assigned folders yet. I'll just go for next. Later on, if you're going to create a folder, then um, maybe we can assign one. 
so assign application permission since this is going to be me i'll allow all it's up to you if you're going to deny some services to your users that's your configuration so i'll go ahead and apply Ta -da! there you go so i have gene Guaki out there we can create more but later on let's try to see if we can we will do so i'll go i'll go ahead and share a folder create i'll place a name here mis files description i'll place public files for mis okay i want to hide subfolders that other users doesn't have access to so i check that and go for next then this one enable data checksum doesn't really matter enable shared folder quota since it's me i don't want to have quota so for other users that you want like i just want to give you five gigabytes of space then you can put it there so local users read and write read and write these are the permissions for the folder that we created so we're giving everybody a read and write access except for guests so that's how you do it so admin ginard and mis will have access to mis files all right so click on file services and uh check this one out so you can enable recycle bin now pc window explorer you can copy paste this address okay copy this one then basically you can use this one on the web browser instead of ip address 192.168.180.118 colon 5000 you can just go ahead and go slash slash mis nas colon 5000 and you will arrive at the same server but I'm going to close that one because we are already logged in through the IP address. Now you can also paste that one on your search bar and then it's going to ask you to log in with the account that I have created earlier. And let's try to see. There you go. We're able to log in. So slash slash MIS NAS will bring us here. Okay. Now I don't want to do every time that I'm going to access that NAS. I don't want to go to that search bar and keep on typing slash slash mis nas so i'm just going to map a drive so that every time i'm going to log into my pc it's already here so i'll choose the um, drive letter and then type in mis nas here i'm going to browse that that's mis files that's the folder click next and then hurrah you can see it here that's 10 terabytes that's very cool huh so every time I'm going to open my computer, the drive will be there. So it's easier for me to access rather than typing that one on my search bar on the lower left corner there and typing slash slash mis nas. Okay, I'm going to give you another example wherein it's easier to manage uh, people by groups. So I'll create a group and place users in that certain group so that it's easier to assign permissions. I'll create a group. The group name would be MIS. I don't know uh, group description, so I'll just put MIS. The next, I'll give them read and write access to MIS files folder. There you go. Click read and write, then next. So here you can see that one we can give coda, but I want it to be unlimited, so I'll just go for next. I'm going to allow them with all the services because they are the MIS people. Okay, that's it. So, try and create a folder for a different user so i'll create a finance then i don't know a description for finance so i'll just place finance as well all right and then i'm going to hide subfolders in files from users without permission okay i don't need to encrypt um, here is the quota for the folder so i'll just place maybe 1 TB or let's say 100 gigabytes so you can choose so enable shared folder quota they are not going to exceed 100 gigabytes this is summary go for next okay who is going to have access to this these are local users these are not groups since I am the admin there are no finance users yet I'm just going to give read and write access to admin and and Ginard and MIS and then oops no access to guest and I'll create another one so that we have more examples let's place registrar 
same scenario here just copy and paste that one to the description i'll add sub subfolders for those guys i don't need to encrypt the folder let's give him a quota 100 gigabytes uh, i think register has more files so i'm thinking giving them maybe 500 okay next quick summary right here then hurrah let's give access to no access to guest admin okay there you go all right let's create a group so that we can assign users to a certain group so let's just say finance users okay copy and paste that i don't have a very good description in mind so who are they going to have access to finance files they're not going to have access to registrar and mis so user quota since it's a group i'll i'll leave it like that i'm not going to put any quota for 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 a user quota so this is individual space quota so it's okay next assign application permissions i think i'll just leave that one as default group speed limiting i don't need to set okay um that's the quick summary so if you're going to create users member them to finance users if they are finance people okay so i'll create another group for registrar so that if i'm going to create the registrar users for a certain folder then they are going to be a member of the registrar users so this registrar users again will not have access to finance files and mis files but have access to registrar files i leave those ones by default and apply apply quick summary it's done now it's time to create a user uh, as of now i don't have a registrar user or a finance user but i have an it guy so i'll name him here that's the first one we're going to create after my account so i'll name this as our eating description it email then set the password they can change the password once you, once you give them the access then they can change it if they want to okay let's go for next then here's the groups that he can join to so i want him to become an admin http mis and default users i'll next that one then these are the read and write permissions since he is an mis guy he needs to have permissions to those folders but if he is not the mis guy then make sure you're giving the right permission to the folders that he is going to have access to okay so that's a quick summary of it since um i'm done here i'm going to let rostan create the other users for this nas okay i hope you have learned something from this video guys and if there are any questions you want to ask, drop a comment down below and I'll be happy to answer them once I'm online. Okay, see you in my next video guys. Go ahead and explore the other things out here if you want to. Bye-bye.